A call for the removal of the death penalty from the law books ahead of a regional conference on that issue. The OEC is said to be much more advanced than CARICOM in its efforts at regional integration. And Flow reverses a decision by Lime two years ago to outsource the company's retail outlets. I am Lorian Graham Carter with the Channel 5 News. Details after this. Top in the news, a pro-life advocate would like the authorities to consider removing the death penalty from the law books in the wake of a regional conference on the abolition of the death penalty. Human rights experts and pro-life activists are among those who've gathered in Guyana for a regional conference on the abolition of the death penalty. The European Union and British High Commission are hosting the two-day event which began on Monday. The European Union's policy on the death penalty is that it is inhumane. Father Franklin Coffey, Director of the Justice and Peace Commission of the Redemptorists of the English-speaking Caribbean region, is attending the conference. He spoke to Channel 5 News prior to his trip. The EU policy on death penalty. The death penalty is cruel and inhuman and has not been shown in any way to act as a deterrent to crime. Furthermore, any miscarriage of justice could lead to the, the intentional killing of an innocent person by state authorities. Are you in support of the Amnesty International to um, have that law off our books since that you're advocating for the abolition of the death penalty? Well, I think it makes sense. How many years you said? 29 years. The EU has been seeking support from members of the United Nations General Assembly to ban the death penalty. The date of the last known execution by capital punishment on Ireland was in 1989. The death penalty remains in Dominica and aggravated death and treason are the crimes punishable by death. However, there is currently no one under sentence of death here. From a Catholic priest's point of view, again, the church is against death penalty. It was in 1999 that, without changing the teachings of the church, and I have a quotation here that Pope John Paul II appealed for a consensus to end the death penalty. So what is the purpose of having a law on our books if it is not being used? A few years ago, I attended a similar conference in, in Trinidad. So really, it's an ongoing process. It's, it's an opportunity to educate the members of the United Nations, you know, and get them to implement, you, you know, the, the thinking. Given the fact that we have um, this law here, are you concerned that um, it could be meted out? Yes, I, I am concerned. I am the fact that it is there uh, on the law. Is there, and I think that is the reason why it is still there. Father Coffey said he has made no formal case to government on the matter. Edona John Baptist, Channel 5 News. Secretary General of the Caribbean Community, Erwin Larocque, has acknowledged that the OECS is more advanced than CARICOM in regional integration. The establishment of the Caribbean community and common market was the result of a 15-year effort by countries of the British West Indies Federation to fulfill the hope of regional integration. CARICOM was established by the Treaty of Chagra Ramas and came into effect on August 1, 1973. While CARICOM is older than the OECS, which was created in 1981, its strides toward regional integration are seen as least substantial. One of the reasons for that, according to the CARICOM Secretary General, is that the OECS has a smaller membership than CARICOM. Ambassador Larock attended the 62nd meeting of OECS heads on Ireland last week. Let's just say that it's a lot easier to integrate um, the OECS, uh, being the more commonalities among the OECS than there are among the, the wider Caribbean. And it's also easier to work in a smaller group. To, to find consensus. You will find consensus among six or seven countries in the OECS. In wider CARICOM, you have to find consensus on 15. And I believe, as I said, that there are certain issues that are more common among the OECS and easier to deal with than if you have a wider CARICOM. CARICOM. You have a population, total population of about 600,000 in the OECS. And when you take CARICOM uh, with Haiti, you're speaking about a population of 16 to 17 million. Um, and there are certain ramifications, certain implications 
you know, that, that one has to take into account in certain issues that are being dealt with. Ambassador Larock says in the next revision of the Treaty of Chagraramas, consideration has to be placed to recognize the OECS Economic Union. It has been discussed within the context of CARICOM and I think it is accepted that, that the OECS will move fast in some areas and we have to provide a legal framework for which uh, that would not um, you know, uh, derogate from the CARICOM treaty in that regard. We have to um, look at Dominica's case. Uh, where would you say Dominica is as it relates to um, enabling the environment for regional integration? I think Dominica is doing an excellent job. I think all our member states are doing an excellent job in an enabling environment. Um, Dominica has always been a supporter of CARICOM integration and of OECS integration. I mean, I at one point represented Dominica in those views, so I know, and, and that policy has continued. Both organizations have a free movement regime in the CARICOM single market and economy and the OECS economic union. The history of the CSME, a move to deepen the integration movement, dates back to 1989, while the OECS economic union took effect in 2011. I don't see a problem at all in, in, in what the OECS is, is seeking to do. Um, they're, they're always um, keeping uh, the wider CARICOM informed of what is going on. And some of the very players in the OECS, uh, some of the ambassadors of the OECS or, or, the, or the Commission are also um, playing a critical role in the wider CARICOM integration. So I think there's harmony and uh, Demica continues to play an important role. In other major news, a new tongue bus driver is in police custody assisting them with investigations surrounding his attack on his girlfriend on Monday using a cutlass. The bus driver reportedly entered the young lady's workplace just after midday on Monday, inflicting several cutlass wounds to her hands and other parts of her body. She was rushed to hospital where doctors performed close to seven hours of surgery in an attempt to save one of her hands. The surgery is said to have been a success and she is listed as being in a stable condition at the hospital. Reports say some time ago the same man was charged $10,000 in court for malicious damage of household items belonging to his girlfriend. In our attempts to go beyond some of the violence which has taken place recently, Channel 5 News decided to speak with a local expert. Councillor with the Social Welfare Division, Oliver Wallace, says there are a number of reasons why an individual may stay in an abusive relationship. And what you find, coupled with what we miss growing up, it begins to gradually turn abusive. But what you find is oftentimes, unfortunately, a person abuses somebody during the daytime. But later on, this is the very same person who comes and says, I'm sorry, darling. I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry, honey. Whereas you find a child who was brought up with their parents, daddy, mommy, brothers, sisters, got hurt by everybody. And no one at home ever said I was sorry for what I did. He says some people stay in abusive relationships because their emotional needs are being met by their partner. Wallace says unresolved anger issues might cause an abusive relationship to result in fatality. And anger is not an issue that just stems out by itself there's always something that causes the anger. So when a person reaches an outburst of anger to do such harm to another person, it's been resulting in death. The question is sometimes, what happened before? Okay? And we could almost put it like, anger is like a charge. Somebody gets high, and they are, in their mind they have told themselves, I am going to do X, Y, and Z. And it's until this is accomplished, they are not going to stop, to stop to think reasonably. I suppose if we go talk to these two young men now and ask them, how did you feel immediately after you were done doing what you're doing? They snap back then into reality. Wallace is advising men and women without conflict resolution skills to seek counseling before it's too late. In other news now, educating Dominica's youth on the effects of climate change is priority for Dominica's newly appointed male CARICOM Youth Ambassador. Andrea Louis has more. The CARICOM Youth Ambassador Program acts as the regional network of Caribbean young people and provides a platform for youth participation in CARICOM decision making. In an interview with Channel 5 News, the male youth ambassador underscored the importance of preparing the young population for the effects of climate change. The young ambassadors are the link between the issues and priorities of CARICOM and the young people in their respective countries. 
Our mandate includes especially three specific areas, which is education, the environment, and culture. Education is needed, like we see, for example, the passage of Tropical Storm Erica and the, the preparedness of people educated on the ground, what they should do. And for example, if climate change, education and environment comes all together as one. And for the last two years, I've been working as a project officer with the National Youth Council, implementing a program called the Sustainable Development Education Program, where we've been to over 20 schools in the last two years and educated over 500 students on different vulnerabilities and different impacts of, of sustainable development pillars. Pierre says the absence of a stipend for the CARICOM Youth Ambassadors can hinder the implementation of various projects. Because currently, CARICOM Youth Ambassadors don't have a stipend. We have a fancy title called a CARICOM Youth Ambassador, but we don't actually have a stipend to actually carry out programs. So that's where I think um, my ability and my, my experience for the last two years in project writing and accumulating different sources of revenue to actually drive projects and different networking that we've, we've been able to do for the last two years have given me a good position to actually not be filtered or, or to be flustered based on the challenges. A CARICOM Youth Ambassador serves a two-year term. Karaya John Baptist is Dominica's female CARICOM Youth Ambassador. You are watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, the Dominica Council on Aging advocates for more consideration for the elderly. Welcome back. General Manager of Flo Dominica, formerly Lime, says the government and people of Dominica need to be encouraged by the decision to invest locally, just months after Tropical Storm Erica devastated the country. General Manager of Flo Dominica says the new venture is an opportunity to combine the legacy of Cable and Wireless with the innovation of Columbus International. We have a, a, a very aggressive and robust um, capital investment program across the region and Dominica has not been left out, as you can see here. Um, November 20th, coming from an August 27th um, tropical storm, um, Erica tragedy, I think for us, I, I think this is a very bold move. It's really about stating very confidently and boldly to the Dominican people, the government of Dominica, that our company, CWC Flow, has a very strong and un unmovable commitment to this market, and we really want to demonstrate that for the investments that we make. Customers witnessed the unveiling of Flo's new concept retail store on Old Street on Monday. The goal is to treat customers in a whole new way using new technology. We now have an integrated queuing um, system. Uh, customers walk into the store, uh, someone will greet them on entry and, and that customer will be asked what service they would want to procure within the store, what transaction they would like to complete and that will be queued in into the, in, the integrated queuing system and it will actually go to all the customer service pieces or they, they, it will go to the specific desk at which the customer wants to be served and that customer can then walk around the store, can sit at, on the sofa, can look at the television screen, can look at other mobile products, um, can look at the other services within the store while their turn is being queued up and once that customer or that the customer is queued uh, a customer service rep will actually walk onto the floor and pull that customer and actually take them to the desk where they need to be served. Another key feature of the retail store is the bill payment kiosk machines where customers can settle their bills without having to line up to do so. The general manager says the transformation taking place at the company represents a new commitment to the Dominican people to do better. The new flow is a result of a merger between cable and wireless and Columbus International. The company, now called Flow, has once again taken over complete management of its customer service department. The general manager says this decision makes sense as the company aims to distinguish itself in the area of improved customer service. And we did it because, again, part of our commitment, we feel that we need to have 100% ownership of our customer touch point. And if we want to make a very strong commitment to the market that we will actually change the, the landscape in Dominica or the way we, we are seen in this market for our, the quality of our customer service, I think we had to own it 100%. And better security for the elderly is on the cards for the Dominica Council on Aging. Andrea Louis has the details. This as the council gets ready to host the third Caribbean conference on aging, elder abuse and the rights of older persons. The council believes greater steps can be taken by local officials to ensure the safety of elders in our society. I felt myself uh, police need to be trained in how to interview older people, how to handle them. You cannot come with this, with this abrupt and, 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 and moving them around and asking for questions. You have to know how to, how to deal with them. We at, at 
a DCOE have had been trying for what four years now mm -hmm. to try to get a very simple system of a, a simple alert system that would work with a simple cell phone. We were talking of just getting a phone that may just have three pre pre program numbers so that somebody living alone would press one, which would be a neighbor, two, which would be a relative. We are still trying to pursue this. We believe it's possible. The Caribbean Conference, which will see over 75 participants from both Latin American and Francophone countries, will cover several other issues connected to elder abuse. Out of this conference, we are expecting that there will be a, a common position by the, by the whole region, by the participants, uh, and some of it may help shape laws that, are, that may be required to take care of older persons. They may, be, they may require, they may, um, they, they may also look into, into development of policies, and that's one of the things, because in Dominica, we, we have attempted, we have a policy, but that needs to be re rehashed and, and, re and modernized. So, so in, the, in that way, we are, we are hoping that there'll be a collective approach to it, and that it'll be recognized at a CARICOM level or even at a broader level, or let's say we can say at the OACS level. The two-day conference is scheduled to start on Monday, 30th of November at the Fort Young Hotel. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. The Education Trust Fund will receive a cash contribution following one major carnival event in 2016. That's the aim of the Mother's Queen show scheduled for Saturday, 30th of January 2016 at the Ara House of Culture. Seven young ladies from different catchment areas around Dominica will contest the title. The aim of our show is to portray the traditional costume of our country, to highlight the talents of our mothers, to contribute towards our carnival industry in Dominica, and to be able to give back to our needy members of our community. In 2013, we gave back to the government printry for assistance in hosting of the Easter Val and to the Operation Youth Quick, who generally help with the needy children of our country. In 2014, we gave back to the Social Center, who works with the young people of our country. In 2015, we gave back to the Convent Preparatory School to assist with their school eating area. The reigning mother's queen is Frances Lockhart. Sports is next with Kenny Williams. We begin our sports package with cricket. A first inning century for Vishal Singh and a nine wicket haul from Gudakesh Moti set the pace for Guyana Jaguars' nine wicket win against Barbados Pride on Monday. Guyana batted first with Singh contributing 121 to his team's 337 all out. The team went on to cement their victory by bowling out Barbados for 104 with no Bajan batsman exceeding 19 runs. Leading by 233, the Jaguars enforced a follow-on, but Barbados showed a better performance in their second innings, with Carter scoring 89, Brooks 53, and Chase 50 to bring their team forward. But it was Moti who lessened the pride of the Bajan team as he went through their lineup on his way to picking up 6 for 79. Barbados would be all out for 272. Guyana needed 40 for victory. The team reached that target inside eight overs. Still in cricket, Jamaica Scorpions boast a nine-wicket win over Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, with John Campbell finishing with a career best of 8 for 93 and securing a crucial 83 in the second innings on Monday. Red Force batted first to amass 271 with Solozano adding 110. Jamaica's McCarthy batted his way to 121 to help bring the Scorpions to 291. Red Force performed poorly in their second innings to score 175 all out with no batsman scoring over 31. Campbell wreaked havoc for Red Force as he picked up 7 for 73. Jamaica's target was then set at 156 when Campbell secured 86 not out with his team scoring 156 in their second innings. In some football, the match between Portsmouth Secondary and St. Mary's Academy favored the home team on Monday as the secondary school's football championships continued. 
Jamie Parillo secured a one for PSS with another coming from his teammate to take the win over St. Mary's. Meantime, at Portersville, the scores at the end of the game were 3-2 to two in favor of Isaiah Thomas Secondary when the team came up against Dominic Dominica Grammar School. In football action on Wednesday, Cassibrew Secondary will battle Pierre Charles Secondary, while Goodwill Secondary take on Northeast Comprehensive in a 13 and under match at Portersville. The Cassibrew Secondary and Pierre Charles Secondary will go head to head in the under 17 category at Newtown. And finally, in football, the DFA Division I League continues with two matches on Wednesday. Wednesday, Exodus Football Club will take on Maosoka Strikers at the Dubla playing field while Glanvillia Renegades will come up against MV Maxano Bombers at the Benjamin Park. Both matches begin at 5 p.m. And closing off our sports, the Convent High and Dominica Grammar School Music Land will face off in the under-16 and under-20 category at the Dominica Grammar School on Wednesday. The first match is expected to begin at 3 p.m. and the other at 4. Well, that's all the time we have for sports. I am Kenny Williams. Join us again next time. Your weather report is next. Good evening to you viewers and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. Weak and stable conditions continue to affect the islands of the Lesser Antilles today and generally fair skies were observed across most of the islands. Across Dominica, mostly cloudy skies during the morning gave way to generally fair skies by afternoon. Similarly, radar imagery indicated shower activity mainly in the interior during the morning. A relative drying up of the atmosphere was observed in the afternoon. Tonight's weather is expected to be fair to partly cloudy with a few scattered showers. These conditions are expected to persist into tomorrow. Sea conditions tomorrow, moderate in open water with waves peaking near 7 feet. And looking ahead, weak and stable conditions are expected to continue to produce occasional cloudy skies with some scattered showers into Friday. Looking beyond this three-day period, an increase in show activity is expected late Sunday into Monday. And across the Les Antilles tomorrow, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers are expected across the chain. And on the international scene, clear skies are expected in New York and Beijing, partly cloudy skies in Miami and London, and there's a chance of rain in Caracas. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.13 a.m. and will set at 5.32 p.m. For further information, call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit our website at weather.gov.dm. Thank you for joining us this evening. Have a good night. That's news, the headlines again, a call for the removal of the death penalty from the law books ahead of a regional conference on that issue. The OEC is said to be much more advanced than CARICOM in its efforts at regional integration, and Floor reverses a decision by Lime two years ago to outsource the company's retail outlets. Email us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube page. On behalf of the production team, I am Doreen Brady Carter, Thank you for joining us.